Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss topics relevant to the appeal process, where it is, where it's going, and where it's been. So I thank you for joining me today, liking, commenting, subscribing to the channel. Please hit the like button so you'll get more update information exactly when I put it up. Um, so it's a good thing. It's a good thing. We had a few commenters that guaranteed, guaranteed that sentencing would be postponed until after the Chicago hearing. And um, so Rolling Stone said that the sex crimes charges begins August 1st, 2022, and that the judge did postpone the sentencing until June 16th, 2022. This is very exciting, and I am glad that it went down this way. Now, a lot of people are doing a great deal of motion readings, reviews. They're doing a great job at um, talking about the sentencing. They're doing a great job reporting the dates and times of filings. So I'm not going to do that part. I want to take it a different route until an appeal impact has actually occurred on behalf of Robert Sylvester Kelly that there are a lot of political energy surrounding Robert Sylvester Kelly in the world today. And it's really ironic that three years ago, this was already predicted, okay? So I'm gonna take you through a wonderful woman's interview and I stumbled across it. And, and, and for some reason I get these connections and they randomly show up. <laughs> It's like as though the internet god or goddess is saying, put this out there because this belongs here now. So I'm really grateful that that's how it's going down for me. Um, again, things are changing in a political arena regarding the criminal justice system. And my focus and my eyesight is on the Supreme Court. Because in between that, you're going to go through a lot of highs and lows. But the reality is hitting that Supreme Court and getting ready. And just in case he needs to go there, we're staying steps ahead of the game, right? So let's listen to this interview that was talked about. And it's going to surround Robert Sylvester Kelly, but it's going to also bring forth something that we never thought about into why this thing is happening to him. Why all these women are allowed to get on the court stand and perjured against the defendant and, and showing up with lies, showing up with wrong dates. I've always said, why are these people coming forth and their story is so bogus? This is the reason why. Let's listen. Yeah. Peace and black power to my queen sister. How you doing, Shaharazad Ali? Doing fine. Praise be to Allah. All right. Um, I was already live right now for about a good maybe three minutes, and I was um preparing the people for what's coming up. We have the uh the most lovely, beautiful queen, Shaharazad Ali here, been putting in this work, sacrificing a lot of her time to elevate the consciousness of our people. Say hi to the audience, um, my sister. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon to my black peak. All right. Um, how's your book doing now? You still you still working that book? You know the miss. I mean the guide to understanding the black man, and you also did one to the black woman. I think right. Yeah, I did the uh, black man's guide to, to understand understanding the black woman. Right. Right. It's really doing fine. You know what has happened, so that is that I've got a whole new audience now. I have wow. the children That's right. of the parents who disagree with the book back in 1990. Now I'm dealing with their children. Oh, there you go. That's what's up. And you know the children, <laughs> they're going to adapt to it. generation now. Right, because they see what's going on, you know. I remember yeah. watching a video of you back in the days where you was teaching um, the women how to be a woman, how to speak properly to your man. I remember that tape like it was yesterday. That was, That's still good. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, so right now, it looks like you're coming into Harlem. 
you're coming into New York and um, you're getting ready to tear the roof down like you always do. Talk about that right Well, now. I uh, certainly hope I can bring some new information, a new perspective, which is just what I try to do. You know, we have uh, been uh, messed up in this country. Uh, we have been damaged, confused. Uh, trick, you know, everything that you can think of that's bad has been done to us by the enemy in the, over the past 435 years. Mm -hmm. And so it may take yeah. us 435 years before we're able to get out of this stage right. of just talking about it. We still haven't completely moved to the stage of doing something about it. You know, right now we in the talking and confessing and debriefing stage, and that's important too. You know, uh -huh. that's how we're gonna do that. Now, about what I want to talk about today, and I know that New York done beat it to death, but I want to talk about R. Kelly. Oh, you know what? I, I was gonna ask you that, but I said I didn't want to get off the topic. But but that's good. Yeah. Let's talk about R. Kelly. Yeah, I, I want to talk about that because. Uh, There's so many white men in America who have killed our women, our men, unjustly murdered our men, our women, our, even our children. And I don't think that we have a group of black women who have organized to go after them. These white uh, men and women who have worked to destroy our people, our families, and I don't know of any group of black women who have come together and uh, decided to do some taping and interviews and bring charges against them. Real talk, So sister. I think it's very ironic that some black women have headed up this campaign against our Kelly. Mm. And I want to talk about what and why we do that kind of thing against a man. You know, we haven't had that, but... We will always, and this just really proves the things that I've been talking about since March of 1990 when I came out with the Black Man's Guide. And you know what kind of hell I've gone through over right. the years. Oh, yeah. People fight with they me came about at that. you for that. You know, and it, and it has taken a lot of energy and, and a lot of my stress and time to go out and try to defend the truth. Uh, but... We, as black women, when we get mad at one man, now this is really interesting how this goes, when we get mad at one man, we take it out on all the men. And uh, we tend to do that, and we punish them, and we hate them, uh, we can't stand rejection, and I think a lot of the women who are angry with R. Kelly now, because he likes younger females, uh, are really jealous and angry and disappointed because he cut them loose because they either aged out or he didn't want them anymore or he didn't fulfill his promises. And that includes his wife, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so I feel bad for the brother. Uh, in America, the traditional common law minimum age to get married is for boys to be 14 and girls can be 12. This ain't no new information. Okay, 24 states, you can be under 16 and get married. 17 states have no legal minimum. You can get married any age as long as the parents consent. Mm -hmm. In Utah and Alabama, you can be 14. 12-year-old girls can get married in Alaska, Louisiana, and South Carolina. Now. Mm -hmm. So this is not new. The white man has always married 12 and 13 year old girls. There are laws on the books that people are fighting now to get taken off because of they calling it uh, the child bride you know, situation mm -hmm. from other countries and uh, uh, sex trafficking, which is what they are calling slavery now. They didn't change that language so that we won't, they can pull slavery out of the vocabulary that any of us use and just call it human trafficking, sex trafficking. That's the new language for that, mm -hmm. you know. And so uh, when they came here, they didn't have enough people. Mostly men came. Women were very scarce. And so what they did is that as soon as a young girl got through puberty, as soon as she started having her menstrual cycle, then they were able to marry her because she could birth a child. 
Mm -hmm. The white man has always been concerned about his numbers, and his birth rate is down right now. And he's marrying grown women. But they have fertility problems more than we have. And that's why they get so excited when they get pregnant. A lot of times we get pregnant, we be disappointed. We be mad. But when they get pregnant, it's a sign of celebration because they finally, you know, will be able to bring another white child into the world. But they would always marry these young girls as soon as they became childbearing uh, able. Do you think... And do you think it is better? Do you think it, it um works better with an older man or a younger man? Does the age even matter, or does the age even well, matter? Well, age does matter because a younger man, uh, you know, there have been studies that have been done over the years that say as women that we mature five or seven years ahead of you all anyway. Mm -hmm. Now that would be emotionally, socially, and a lot of other categories of development in humans. And so, uh, my own husband, he was 16 years older than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that almost wasn't old enough because we need somebody who has superior, more experienced knowledge, somebody who has more patience, and somebody who has something to teach us. And so it has been tradition. In fact, uh, men usually uh, congratulate each other when they have a younger woman. It's always looked at as, as a source of pride. And uh, so this is not new. Now, Elvis Presley was 25 when he married his wife Priscilla, and she was 14. Oh. They called him the king. Look at that. Uh, Look at that. See? Go ahead, sister. Jerry Seinfeld, that comedian that everybody thinks is so funny, he was 39. He married a girl 17. And, and you know what, sister, so how was I behind that? Criticize none of this. Thank you. Go ahead. Stephen Tyler, the rock star, he was 27. He married a little girl 14. He's still great. Ain't nobody ever brought, bring this stuff up. And Jerry, G, Jerry Lee Lewis, that piano player that sang that goodness gracious great balls of fire, his little girl was 13. Mm. When he got with her, so white men, popular white men, now we're not even talking about the white men we don't know about and who weren't famous. Right. But they've been doing this. R. Kelly ain't did nothing no different. And as a lot of black men know, all of you know, because of the food, the hormones in the food, these young girls have developed more so even than a lot of adult women. They got big breasts. They're sexually attractive to men and women, unfortunately. <laughs> right. So what happens is that a lot of times you can't push them young girls away. They won't leave you alone. And so, as adult women, if a woman is out here and she's trying to maintain a relationship, she's not just trying to defend her man against other grown women. She got to defend him against them young girls that be coming at y'all hard. And they make it almost impossible is for there, all to decline it. Is there a conspiracy to tear down the legacy of these great legends that come up in our races? Like, for example, look at Michael Jackson, Bill Cosby. Talk, let's talk about that too. Look at what they're doing to Michael Jackson now that he's and gone and he white can't man defend has himself. Free. And yes. those other white men are big time. They got big time lawyers. You know, it's like why do we have the tax problems and money problems when we get to be rich and famous? It's because they have access to the best defense, the best attorneys, the best accountants, the best bookkeepers and best uh, uh, tax attorneys that protect them from things that because of racism they keep us out of so we end up losing everything we got we don't have the same kind of advisors mm -hmm. and so it's the same as in these relationships as I said we don't tear these men down they need to come out with surviving all of the men that be with young girls and how did those situations turn out Mm -hmm. So R. Kelly, being as famous as he is, those girls are throwing themselves at his feet. It's impossible that women would not be coming after those kind of men. So when I look at that, you know, and that's not saying that R. Kelly uh, should have done those things. But, you know, when you get to be rich and famous... I peeped in there. I didn't go in because I couldn't qualify because I wouldn't do the things required. But I peeped at it. And when you get to have, have really a lot of money 
and really a lot of fame, the first thing they do is that you have access to better drugs. Drugs tear down the morals. That's the purpose of that, to break down the morals. And so when you get better drugs, you start to thinking because of the financial situation you in, having so much money and success and people worshiping you coast to coast around the world, that you deserve something, some kind of greater sex than everybody else is having. Mm-hmm. You want to have something that's bigger or greater or more unique. And Bill Cosby fell into that same trap. So it's not excusing them for it, but I'm just telling you what's available at that stage of success. And so it makes them feel like, I deserve something better. I deserve something more greater, something more creative, something more unique, or whatever it is. And so then they get off into that. And they end up having to pay for it. They have to pay for it spiritually, and they have to pay for it emotionally and financially. It costs a lot of money to have weird sex that you got to constantly be paying, be paying people off. Let me ask you, sister. Um... What do you think about men putting their hands on women? Is it ever permissible in a relationship for a man to strike a woman? Well, this is how I see that as how it works. Okay, I agree. The one thing that a man shouldn't do to a woman is to physically hit her. That's what, no matter what happened, if I said that, a man should not Never physically hit a woman or injure her or strike her. That's the one thing that you all shouldn't do to us. But then my question gets to be, what is the one thing we shouldn't do to you? Go ahead. There ain't nothing. We have permission in this society to do anything to you all. We can spit in your face. We can kick you. We can hit you in your privates. We can do anything, and there ain't no penalty for it. Women, we don't act feminine anymore. We've lost our femininity Ooh. as black women. Okay? We more rough and tougher than y'all. In fact, we'll throw our fists up to fight a man. Knowing full well that if you all touch us, that the big white man That's right. is going to come in and defend us. He ain't on our side. Is that by design, He's sister? against you. Is it by design? For it to be like that. He's not on our side. He's against you. Mm -hmm. And he's willing to do anything to come against you, keep you down, keep you locked up with your spirit, and make sure that your woman is not under your control. So, no, I can't say that there's any situation that a man don't have a right to do that. If a woman come up and jumps in a man's face and she physically is striking and hitting him, he has a, a, a human obligation Human now, I'm talking about this right. is just what humans do. Right. This is mm-hmm. what we do. If she does that, then he has the right to do more than restrain her. Because some of these women come at you like a man. And you have to be able to defend yourself. I didn't teach my grandsons not to fight back. I say, those girls come up and they push you and shove you or kick you or spit on you or whatever. You knock the hell out of them. With the same amount of force that they used on you. Don't go overboard. But if they come up and slap you, you have a right to slap them back and I'll come and defend you. Mm. I'm not teaching that. That's that's against all nature. So women don't want to act like women, don't want to be feminine, don't want to do the things that a woman traditionally and historically has done in order to receive respect and to be protected and upheld by our men. They want, we want to act any kind of way we can act, any kind of wild, out of control way, but the, we'll always throw up. But a man don't have no right to ever touch a woman. Well, a woman, we don't have any right to behave like we do, but we do it. So if we got to break the rules, then it makes you all be able to break the rules too. As I said, if that's what we can't do, then what is it that we can't do to you all? And we can't come up with one thing that we all agree on, the men and the women, that we shouldn't do to a man. You all are just out there, just uh, completely helpless in a sense, because it don't even have to be the truth. If we call the police and lie and say you get us, they're going to take you down. It's going to cost you a lot of time and money. 
All right. Do you think do you think a man should have more compassion than money or more money than compassion? Well, in America, the people with compassion don't get no money, unfortunately. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now, that's, that's really how that is. It's unfortunate, but that's really how that is. You know, if, if you live here and you're trying to survive under this system, you know, there's an old saying about America, you can do anything you want to do here, just don't get caught. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're living... In those kind of times, things are only right to a certain extent. There's not going to be any perfection in any situation that we're involved in. But we have to still continue to work to defend what little civilization that we have left so that we can still set a good example and rear children who are able to be successful and who know how to protect themselves from the enemy. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Ladies and gentlemen, that powerful video is in the description box below. You can get the full interview. Really, really wonderful woman. Um, I want to meet her because she has some power behind her thoughts. And, you know, a lot of us are out here, you know, promoting consciousness and promoting awareness to our community. And, you know, the reason why Hollywood stands so strong is because they create the backdrop to the story if you watch them. What is going on between Will Smith and Chris Rock, black on black crime? They are saying, I'm not interfering in your world. The only time I interfere in your world is when my money weakens. So this better make us some money or you both are going down. Even Chris Rock as a victim will be going down. So back to R. Kelly, he has been muted. And three years ago, this was predicted that R. Kelly's case will go down as a cultural and political point of view because you have people muting him disgracing him, publicly assaulting him through media and social media to prevent him from ever being able to get onto the same platform that everyone else is and make that crazy money. This is America, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a big pimp that says, you better have my money. You better get my money. Go out there and do whatever you got to do. Bring my money back and then pay taxes on it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there are 17 states that have no minimum requirement on marriage. 17. Um, I like the fact that um, Shahrazad brought out slavery is now called the new human trafficking. Okay, Um, um, and that's the truth. That is the truth. I recall a young lady back in my past. She was like 13, 12 And, you know, we were in the church, so we were very naive to a lot of the things that happened in the street. Well, anyway, this girl met this 24-year-old man. I don't know where she met him. I don't know how she met him. But she met this 24-year-old man. The mother decides that, well, since you are in a relationship with each other, you can come on and move in with us. And, you know, you can help us out and we can be a big family. I don't know what she was thinking at this point, but I guess she was thinking that she could make him a man. Okay. And so the girl got pregnant and she ends up with seven, eight kids. Okay. And one right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. So that right there was assault, sexual assault. And the mother allowed it because she let him move in with her. And then they got married. Okay. There was all she had to do was sign over. The mother signed over and I, and, and I'm listening and I'm thinking as a 12 or 13 year old, when this is going on, wow, how did that happen? But it was just curiosity. It had no intrigue upon my life, you know, but the reality of it was, was that they allowed it. Okay. And so this is where R. Kelly is now being looked at as a political and cultural aspect of history that is going to go down 
in the history books. This is why I say his story should be the new history lesson in America, but they will never, ever put something as con controversial as this in the school system for high school students because they don't want them to awaken to what is really going on because they're going to start asking questions. You know, they're going to start asking questions. Why is this? How is this happening? But yet Elvis Presley is allowed to do this. Jerry Seinfeld is allowed to do that. So this is the reason why I brought this video up. So when R. Kelly is being muted, that is what Shaharazad is saying in her interview that we have minimized the black man and it's not fair because this man was like the king is the king of R&B, the whole music industry, bigger than anybody in the 90s. And you mean to tell me that this is how history slaps him down and this is how, and uses the women against the man in order to bring him down. So these are the reasons why these victims are allowed to come into a court of law and testify against the person without evidentiary, you know, evidence, without um, facts, without dates, but with emotion. This is how R. Kelly is, has been convicted with emotion. So what are your points of view? I mean, this is very different, but I feel I had to bring this out. Um, wow. I'm going to finalize this video with another interview with another great man. His name is Bobby Hemmett. He is a lecturer and um, conscious teacher. And his information will be in the description box below as well. What you call God is called nothingness. It doesn't exist in the aspect that it is. It's a whole bunch of energy. But that energy has to be funneled through something. So God's only existence is through man and woman or the black man and the black woman. You understand what I'm saying? You have this, you have an ocean of water, but it ain't shit till they get into the glass. <laughs>
See, the white boy has a play on words, and if you don't understand the lingo, you don't understand. So, this particular perfecting agent, which is supposed to be man, is all linked up from something called a neoplatonic energy. So you don't know what that is, because he can throw that word up in there knowing that you won't know what it is. Neoplatonism comes from Platonism. Plato. Platonism... Plato studied Hermeticism. Hermeticism is the wisdom of the Egyptian Tahuti, and the right. mysteries of Tahuti is the mysteries of alchemy, and the mysteries of alchemy melanin. is melanin. Right. So when he says it's all linked up by a Neoplatonic formula, he's talking about melanin. He's saying the link between God of the cosmos and God's down here is melanin. Wow. Which is called Satan. We're going to get into this tonight. You're talking against yourself. Oh. <laughs> Soot on black substance. We're going to get into all that today, too. You got to get rid of this devil, which means double. Your dual double self, your doppelganger. You're going to get into all that tonight. You see what I'm saying? And tomorrow, or whatever the deal is. Now, the reason I brought that video up is because I feel it is very powerful to bring us back to the awareness of what we're dealing with in this political arena um, regarding our culture and our political aspects. Man and woman, know thyself. This is the most predominant storyline in our culture. You know, black woman, man, know thyself. If you know your weakness, you'll be able to go and maneuver through. If R. Kelly, Robert Sylvester Kelly, as a young man in Chicago at the eight years, at a age of eight, when he was, you know, seeing Lulu and the first time he saw a murder, okay, if he had a new himself, he would have knew that this is only a figmentation of his imagination and his mind that is going through the portals of chaos to bring him to do and be who he's, who society wants him to be. Okay. He really have a choice. You know, did Miss McClinn, was Miss McClinn part of the process that drug him down this path? You know, he wanted to be a basketballer. He wanted to play basketball. He did not want to sing. Miss McClan put him in that position, you know, but either way, he would have been famous. So he still would have been able to get to, you know, um, people who could take advantage of him. But still, you know, what do you think about that? But when you realize that you are the projector of your movie screen, which he always did, Robert Sylvester Kelly always paid attention to being the producer, the um, writer. He controlled it all because he knew the God-like nature within himself. And in knowing the God-like nature within yourself, you cannot be weakened by the very thing that you don't know about yourself. And that was the weakness of him liking his sexual attraction that was induced upon him by someone prior to the age of power that he could force off and prevent from happening. So when you allow it to happen in his mind, possibly psychologically, he could be feeling. So this is a very twisted psychological aspect to the, to the case. However, again, it has a lot to do with the political and the cultural essence of who Robert Sylvester Kelly is planning on becoming historically by Sony and those of power to create the backstory to why he had to go down in history in such a disgraceful way. However, Robert Sylvester Kelly can come back strong from this but it takes a lot of courage on his part and a whole lot of work, a whole lot of work. What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? Am I onto something? Um, let me know, you know, what other points should I be bringing out? Because I'm putting this research together. And as a researcher for the last 27 years, I can say, I know how to connect the dots after I've spoken out what I needed to say. So thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and joining this podcast. And we just ask that you be safe, 
that you, you know, always make sure that you're, you're thinking four to five steps ahead of the game before you walk into whatever it is you're going into and then being safe and always keeping it 100. Thank you so much. God bless, protect us all, and we'll see you next time.